I, 30M, finally got truth and pride out confessions from my wife, 30F, of five years that she's been having an affair for months. I finally got some trickle truths last night from my wife. I set a clear boundary with her that she wasn't to drink alone with her friend back in the south when she went to visit for a bridal shower last weekend, we recently moved up north. She told me her story of what she did that weekend, purely innocent. I got the suggestion to contact the dude's girlfriend. I didn't want to at first, but boy am I glad I did. I asked if she ever felt off about these two. She says, yeah, we've talked about it but he swears they're just good friends. She mentioned she wasn't happy that my wife slept at his place this past weekend. Whoa, what? Then I confronted my wife who doubled down on the same lies. Then I showed her the receipts. She then changes her story to okay I hung out with him but we didn't drink and you said that was okay. I didn't tell you because I knew you'd be upset I'm like you were just drinking in a group, you think it's okay to go home with this dude just because you didn't keep drinking? Then it was I don't remember where we went, I was too drunk. After a lot of prying, pointing out lies and inconsistencies, it became we kissed, then we made out for an hour and then I have feelings for him I don't know what to do with and then we kissed back in November, too. Who knows what she's still hiding, but that's enough for me. I honestly don't see a way out of this that includes us still being married. I left the house and checked into a hotel. I've been having so much anxiety since seeing all the red flags since November. Finally getting some validation after all the gaslighting is a huge relief. It feels 100% better to ask around and risk being wrong and looking like an asshole than to enable the gaslighting and tear apart your mental health while doing it. Alcoholism is a bitch and get some therapy. To deal with it, but that's not an excuse for cheating. Now let's look at the comment before the update. You were made to believe that you are paranoid that marriage isn't for you, but in reality, it isn't for her. They did more than kiss and that two married than one occasion. You have the proof that she cheated and her confession. Contact a lawyer and let her cheating out to everyone including the GF of that guy. She deserves to know. Separate your finances and continue the therapy. Get STD slash STI tested. Drop her like a bad habit. She a cheating ass cake eater that is manipulating her ATM, you. She needs to leave the house and you for however long you need for yourself. If I was in you position I would file for divorce, have her leave the home, tell all sides of the family everything. If she wants to win back her husband she better do the hard work and get busy make changes in herself and doing some world class ass kissing. There are plenty of other women in the world that will treat you right, be faithful, dump this one and go find one of the ones you can count on. Good luck. You are making a good choice by ending it. You cannot stay married if you are the only one who has boundaries that you stick to. She made these choices. Now you make your choices based on your plan for future happiness, and hear me. You will not find happiness with her for a very long time, if ever. She might stop drinking and make a few life changes, but you will always remember how easily she turned on you. Get ready for the fake tears and promises, but know she will act correctly for only a few months. Update Though it's still anxiety-inducing, it gets easier every day to talk about being cheated on, some commented on the original post asking for an update a while back and I'm at the point now where I can share what happened and what I've learned. Most of this is going to be little nuggets of experience. As of last week and five months after filing, I am officially, legally divorced. She begged me not to go through with divorce, got therapy to help her with her personal issues, but she ended up moving out in May and back to the city we left where her coworker is. Gee I wonder why. I've been dating someone for a couple months, and man I gotta say getting back out there does wonders for self-esteem and anxiety. While I once felt like my wife was the one, and maybe she was at that point in my life, in retrospect we weren't that compatible. Now I'm having much more amazing sex, feeling more supported and less judged for being myself, and have more time for myself and to do what I want. She was relatively flexible in negotiating the settlement as long as it was equitable. I took out a personal loan to buy her out of her share of the house, 
and I'm making extra money to pay it off. Divorce is expensive and complicated. More expensive than you think. We had a relatively simple, amicable split with no kids, a newly purchased house and little bit of retirement accounts to divvy up, and I still racked up over $10,000 in legal fees and it took months longer than I thought it would. I now have so much knowledge about divorce, estate and alimony laws in different states, and I hope I never need to use it again. Prenups may feel icky, but if I ever get married again, I'll consider one. Time helps. Every passing day made things a little bit easier to deal with. Therapy also helps. In my case, practicing different meditation techniques with a therapist gave me good tools to bring myself back to center whenever I got pissed off or anxious. Find your support people. I have a friend who had also been cheated on that has been a fucking enlightening bro through this whole ordeal. The other guys, now ex, girlfriend was also a great person to talk to and commiserate with. I've definitely learned a bit about human behaviors, and everyone commenting on my posts helped me see what I wanted to ignore. Adults don't get drunk alone together. Adults don't have sleepovers. Adults don't stay up all night with someone unless they want to fuck. Beware of the trickle truth. Trust your gut. Don't be afraid to raise a little hell to get some answers if something feels off. Talk to her friends, and anyone who might be involved. The pick-me dance is real. As soon as you stop letting her have her cake and eat it too, she'll beg and cry and promise to do better. I probably have dozens of other nuggets I've gleaned from this shitty experience, and I'm always happy to share with those interested. Life is messy and people are often shitty, but optimism that things will be better with time is a powerful thing. My story, how I discovered my wife's multiple affairs. So firstly, just a quick note, I'm reposting because my other posts either got deleted or probably I deleted myself, I don't really remember. Plus many people here wanted to know the story, so I don't mind sharing and to be honest, I think it helps to write this down, in a way it's therapeutic to write it down, and to let others know. Do have in mind that English is my second language so there should be a few grammar errors here and there. First how we met, one night during a night out with some friends and being the third wheeler, the girlfriend of one of my friends invited my ex-wife to join our table, which she accepted. During the hangout we hit off, the connection was there, the spark, the flame, I thought she was pretty and honestly, a little bit shy, how I was wrong. After that night, we went on a date, but before that I purposely gave my contact wrong to see if she kept the interest, she managed to find me an FB, and added me as a friend, we started texting, and thus the first date was made, on that same date I kissed her, we were sitting on the couch of a club, and I thought to myself, the worst that can happen is getting slapped. So I asked can I kiss you, she stared at me like a deer in the middle of the road, then her face came closer, and bam big old smooch. After that she started coming to my house more and more frequently and after a small argument I said that I loved her, bear in mind that this was the first time I knew that I indeed loved her, not lust or passion, just simply love, she texted do you really love me? I responded yes I do she asked do you want to be my boyfriend? I of course said yes. I know massive red flag. After that we started dating and everything went alright, she meet my friends which many in fact would betray me after, and everything felt nice, she introduced me to her parents and I introduced to mine over Christmas, in 2019. She wanted to start a family and wanted to have children as soon as possible. Now I see that she gaslighting me, I've always wanted to take more slowly, but I loved her at the time, plus I also wanted to be a father. She wanted to get married, and so we did, we got married at the begging of the next year 2020. We moved in with her parents, and since I was the only one with a job I brought all of my income to the household. She never got a job, either because she didn't want or was unlucky I don't know, although I did knew that she never touched her pension for the medical leave. All stored up. And I was penniless, the bills kept coming and the payments were done. Fast forward a few months I get the suspicion that something's off, by this time I had managed to clear her name from a previous husband's debt, and her mother's, and was still paying her car. Also I paid for an operation for her to get thinner for her health, she was quite obese. Like pretty big, she didn't exercise and fast food was her go-to meal. 
I on the other hand since I was a chubby guy since childhood tend to take caution but at that time I was also very big. I knew something was off, but I couldn't point it out, she would constantly belittle me, criticize me, and tell me to man up, I kept quiet, and just assumed it was my fault, I didn't want to lose her. I was so stupid. Rose tinted glasses. Her father belittled me her mother criticized me, the only good people of their family was the grandparents. Things remained like this until her mother got sick and went to the hospital, she stopped sleeping with me and the bedroom was dead I grew in frustration, but bottle it in. She would go out at odd hours to return way late, no hugs, no intimacy, until one day I said will you please go sleep with me just once I need my wife with me she decided to go sleep with me only one night. And then again sleeping with her mother, when she slept with me she was angry to do so. I decided that I would stop asking and started sleeping alone. After that she would only sleep with if she so desired, or because her father wanted to. And intimacy was dead only once or twice each four months or so. Because of our financial crisis, she wanted to do some naughty work, I gave her my consent, but told her I was opposed, while my body did, no more kisses, nothing. She said, no she promised to stop and that she was only mine afterwards, yet still didn't slept with me, and again I always had to initiate. My frustration grew. Fast forward to this year, January my mom gets diagnosed with breast cancer, I warned her I wanted to go and see my mother, she said she couldn't come because she had a course starting on February. My guts start giving a warning sign. From February to March she goes to her course for renovating her licenses to start doing private security jobs, when she returns we were lovey doubly, then before leaving again, she drops the bomb, one of my friends wanted to do the dirty with her and that he loved her, got upset about the fact and started a witch hunt, cut contact that I remotely I had a suspicion of being capable of doing this. This was before we got married and she came with the BS excuse of I didn't want it to damage your relationship with your friend, BS. Red flags waving in the sky, I confided with a true friend about my situation, he told me mate she is doing the dirty with other guys check her phone if you are not sure, if there's nothing there you can relax. During this crisis my ex-wife decided to run away with other man then help me out, all I just needed in my opinion was a kiss a hug, a warm night, nothing else I would be happy. She returns from her course I wait for a few days, the day she gets back decides to make an argument with me, saying that I'm doing nothing for us, and that I don't take the initiative, same old complaints, we were planning during that time to move out and got to a city that has a lot of job offers and start living just the two of us, plus my mother-in-law. In a way it was never just the two of us, my mother-in-law was always there, during the argument she asks, why don't I take her again on dates, I replied, while your mother is always with us, I can't have a small alone time with you plus every time I proposed for us to go on dates, she would deny it or just plainly tell that she didn't want that. During this time I didn't have any proof. A few days go by and on the 13th of May, after she's asleep, I unlock her phone, I felt dirty, stupid, by doing this, but that feeling quickly went off and was substituted by rage, I saw in her WhatsApp, loads and loads of texts, pics, videos, you name it, she did everything. Meanwhile I was stuck at home, with a dead bedroom and penniless. I found out that she was in bed with another man during my B-day. Rage soon came, I wanted to slap her awake, but thanks to my mother, I managed to remain calm, went for a smoke outside. After that every day until she left I collected evidence upon evidence, tried to sweep my tracks, but every time I kissed I felt like I was going to puke. I trusted her with my life, I wanted to raise a child with her, I wanted to grow old with her, but after that night, and until today I only feel rage, disgust, and hurt, so much pain. The day before she left again, for her course I confronted her, at first I said we need to talk, don't you have nothing to tell me? Are you sure? Aren't you back into the bad life, my term, are not seeing other men? Other women, she denied everything, I asked to show her cell phone, she didn't. So a little bit later I showed her a small part of what I found out, just the more recent ones, she didn't knew, at least that what she said, her mother took the blame. I didn't believe that and still don't, so she left. I told my mother what happened. On the 24th slash 25th of May I went home to my parents, with just a small duffel bag, with a few essentials, although I did told her about it. On the next I talked with my mother about the situation and started planning for the D-Day, on the 2nd of June I wished her a happy anniversary, it was our marriage anniversary, 
and at night I told that I wanted a divorce via FaceTime. After that day she tried the usual cheater's BS, are you sure this is what you want? Remember we are stronger, didn't you want it to grow old together, etc., during this time I was wavering a bit and kept contact to a minimum, we were supposed to meet after that to sell our weeding rings, but she was a no-show, quite probably she went to the place she was staying to do some nightly activities, I went and sold my rings with my mother-in-law, and she was tearful, but I didn't felt a thing, nothing, just anger. We went with a friendly divorce, I kept my things, she kept her. We later met before the divorce to talk and sign the paperwork, she wanted to know why? I told her, you neglected me, you didn't sleep with me, you didn't have intimacy with me, you didn't care, you always told I was your first priority, but your actions told me otherwise. She asked, didn't you think that if we lived alone together things would change? I believed for a while, but you never changed, and the day never came, I never cheated on you, I don't believe that, and never will, can we at least remain friends? You will change your number or block me on FB etc? Sure, I won't. I blocked her, after the divorce, I've maintained an NC policy to this day, the anger has mellowed out, it's still there, I hate her for what she did, she transformed a pure thing into plain hatred and hurtful feeling. One day I will forget, but never forgive. I don't know if she has read it or not, but one things I can say there's hope, working out makes me feel better, playing video games and many other hobbies have been resumed on my part. I'm moving on, the scars are still there but I will do whatever I can to get over this. I'm going to go to a psychiatrist on October and should get a new job on the area I'm living now, it's time to close this chapter. Thank you all for the support, I hope that my story inspires you a bit, and remember it hurts, but it will pass. If you need someone I'm here to help. Good luck guys and girls, you deserve better. P.S. At the time I got married I was 25 and she was 23. Caught my wife cheating on me and I know exactly when it started. I caught my wife with AP in our bed and I kicked him out of my house. Oh boy. This is long. Me, 44M, and my STBX, F39, been married for 11 years, no kids, we were a pretty chubby couple until two years ago when I had a blood test and it came off that I was prone to contracting diabetes, gout, and hypertension. It really scared me and we both bit by bit started to have a very healthy life. I went from 117 to 85 kg and my wife, let's call her Jane, from 83 to 65 kg. We felt great and needless to say I never developed those diseases. We attended to a gym almost daily in the afternoon where AP worked as a coach. Let us call him Baldy. When my wife started getting in shape I noticed most guys turned to see her. I felt so proud of her. She is fairly busty and she has magnificent legs. Of course Baldy wasn't the exception. I notice Baldy likes to check women's butt. I've seen him doing it several times and he likes to show off how ripped he is. When Jane and I were regulars at the gym I noticed she was enjoying the attention she got from men. Once we were using the elliptical machines, in front of them there is a cable machine. Baldy took off his t-shirt and started doing crossovers. I turned to my Jane my face of, can you believe this guy, but she was staring at him and she wet her lips. I saw Baldy and I swear he was grinning. I felt crushed. I mean, I was getting in shape but I am not as muscular and fit as he is. When we were driving home, I make a comment about Baldy showing off and Jane said really? I didn't notice I told her you were staring she said I don't remember. I must have been thinking in something else I shrugged it and kept driving, but from there on I noticed they were talking more frequently at the gym. Some weeks later Jane was doing sit-ups using the Smith machine. Suddenly Baldy went to help her, isn't he nice? He was touching her waist and I got angry. She finished the first set and I got there and told him in a not nice way I got it from here Baldy just simulated and told me no problem buddy, he calls everybody buddy and walked off. Jane knows me very well and heard my angry tone. She just said, O-N-G-O-P. I told her, we'll discuss this at home. At home drama blowed up. She called me immature and jealous. I told her I noticed he was trying to get into her pants, she said that she knows that but she would never cheat on me. 
I said then why she let him touch her and she said she didn't want to be rude. About an hour later arguing we agreed to change gym. So we went to another place to do exercise but Jane was resentful at me in the following months, her argument was that I don't trust her. On the third month after we changed gym, a very good opportunity opened up in my job, but in the afternoon. I took it and we had to attend the gym at different hours. I went in the morning and Jane in the afternoon. This is when it all went south. Jane's resentment increased and we barely speak. I send her messages telling her about my day, that I miss her, memes. But she rarely replied or just yes, okay, same here, haha ha, I was very worried and proposed couple therapy. She said I was the one who needs therapy because I'm the one with trust issues. I agreed. I was so desperate to fix our marriage that I even thought it was all my fault. So the following year I went to therapy but Jane's behavior didn't change. We weren't intimate anymore, she never was in the mood. I snooped to her phone but didn't find anything out of the ordinary. I searched her car for a second phone. Nothing. I tracked her phone and map history. It only showed me house work house gym house. Whenever I tried to talk to her, she just said she feels that she's having a 40s phase. It'll pass. I never had any evidence of cheating so I continued working and worrying. We live in a condo. The security guard, a very cheerful man called Mr. P, greeted me. We chat a lot. He was touching his shoulder and told me yesterday he had to move a heavy sofa and he has some pain today. I was sympathetic and he dropped the bomb. Maybe you can arrange a meeting with your massagist I told him who? He said the guy who came yesterday to massage Mrs. Jane. It took me a second to process this. I told him, do you have a video of him? I think he noticed I was pale and hurried to show me. Guess who? Baldy of course, he has come a few times to massage my wife. I took the day off and started investigating. I asked a co-worker for his car and in the afternoon I followed Jane. She parked her car at the mall where the gym is, and there is Baldy waiting for her. They giggle and behave like a couple. Kisses, hugs, and I feel nearly to tear. They walk a couple of blocks and go into a residential area. I tried to follow them with my phone ready to record, but the guard stopped me and asked, can I help you? I just said, what a nice couple, do you know them? He said he think they are newlyweds, but can't tell me anything else. I called Jane but never answered. I returned to the mall and wondered why that place doesn't show on the map. I dial again and I can hear her phone inside her car. That's why. I also found out Jane hasn't attended the gym in eight months. I didn't know that day was the last day I slept with Jane in the same bed. I returned the car and went home and called my parents. Fortunately my dad answered and I told him everything. I was crying and he comforted me and told me to get evidence. Obviously my marriage is over and I need all I can gather while he'll contact one of his friends who was an excellent divorce lawyer. Jane called me when saw the two missing calls, I just told her I was already at home and she told me I'm on my way from the gym. My butt is killing me, yeah, I can guess. When she saw me she asked what happened, why did you cry? I don't know how but I was mentally focused, I smiled and told her I got the flu that's why I left work early. Don't come near me, it might be the bug I'll be tested tomorrow. I'll sleep in the spare room. She agreed. I cried silently and didn't sleep a wink. Nearly midnight I heard her giggling. I guess she's messaging Baldy but I didn't find any evidence of contacting another man. Then it hit me, why didn't I see it earlier? I bet AP is disguised as one of her female co-workers. In the morning while Jane was in the shower I took her phone and created a session in my laptop and put her phone in the same place, we both can unlock our phones. The Cezazin works while the phone is close to my laptop or in the same Wi-Fi account. Then I saw it. Under a female name, the profile picture was a dumbbell. I entered and most of the conversations were deleted, I guess they use work words as code in case I snooped, can you deliver the papers in my desk? 
I know she doesn't have a desk at work. Going to the meeting, where are you? On the top of them boss is in his office. He's clueless, pretty clever. I guess I am boss, because I know her boss is a woman, Jane got out of the shower and saw me you look worse, why don't stay with your parents? I denied the idea thinking of getting evidence. After Jane went out I contacted my dad and gave me the name and number of the lawyer, I called him and explained everything. He told me the captions are useless, they don't have any factual evidence since it's not AP's name and she was smart enough to leave pieces of conversation that looks pretty innocent. I can take pictures of them at the mall, but she can argue they are just good fellas and I can't invade into the residential area without permission because it might get me into more trouble. At work I was in zombie mode, thinking how to get evidence. I might install secret cameras in my house, but Baldy rarely goes to my home and Jane might find them. Unless. I'm out of the picture. I texted Jane and told her I'm positive of the bug and I'll stay at my parents because I might need help. She liked the idea and told me she would miss me but she'll call me every day. When I hung up, I called my dad and my brother. When I got home she has already packed a suitcase for me. She was so eager of getting rid of me. I told her I'll take my laptop and then I checked her messages. Boss will be out of the office, wanna come to my desk? She sent this message almost after I told her I was positive. Good, she bit. We didn't had dinner, no kisses, no hugs. I noticed her watching the time twice. From the door I told her, I'll miss you. I was expecting her to shut the door on my face, but she walked me to my car. And I was gone. My dad and brother were outside the building waiting for Baldy to appear, but he didn't show up. I thought why did she walk me to my car? Of course. Because Baldy was already inside the building waiting perhaps inside her car. I came back, hurried to my house and entered silently. I heard music coming from the bedroom and the moaning. Next to the door there is a sofa, his and her clothes were on it. I put my phone to record and opened the bedroom door and there she was, my wife, the love of my life for 11 years in all four and Baldy behind her. I got a very good seconds of both of their faces when they saw me open the door. Jane screamed and covered herself with the blanket. Baldy went alpha male immediately walking naked towards me, I took a shot of him doing raw my wife, he yelled aggressively at me why don't go for a walk buddy? I hit his troth with my hand opened. I saw this movement in the Mel Gibson movie Ransom. The next second Baldy was coughing and gasping kneeling on the floor. I yelled get out of my house and kicked him out. I threw his clothes at him when my dad, brother and Mr. P were arriving to my house. I told them I'll take it from here and closed the door. Jane was still on the bed covering herself, she was trembling. I told her I have never hurt you nor will I get dressed, I'll wait you in the living. While I was waiting I sent the video to my lawyer and he answered jackpot. A few minutes later Jane showed up, she couldn't see me in the eyes. I started recording the conversation. I asked why. She didn't answer. Was I such an awful husband to you? She started crying but didn't answer. Do you love him? Noting. I stand up and hit the table say something Jane. Damn it, she opened her eyes wide and started trembling again, like a puppy when is scared. I sat and talked calmly. My lawyer will contact you for the divorce. Get a lawyer, she finally spoke. We can fix this. Fix what? Our marriage was over since Baldy was on the picture and you choose him over me it was a mistake no it wasn't, it was a choice, you chose and this is the consequence. What did you think would happen when I find out? Silent again. Go to your sisters and tell her the truth or I will show her the video she went to the bedroom and started packing. I followed her and watched. Since two days ago I was trying to convince myself my wife is long gone. The person who I shared my house with is not my wife. But seeing her, putting her clothes inside the suitcase neatly, with her gracious movements and those little things I love of her hit me hard. I went to the spare room and started ugly crying. I heard when she closed the main door. 
She picked her clothes that were on the sofa. She made the bed where I caught them and I dropped on the floor. So much later I called my dad. He told me Baldy wanted to press charges, but Mr. P told him he didn't resist her in the entrance, so he's trespassing, the condo can sue him, he dropped it and went out. My nosy brother pressed his ear on the door and my dad took him from the other ear to his car. I was ex-soused. The previous days I didn't sleep well. So I almost passed out on the spare room. Next morning my phone had a lot of Jane's messages apologizing and asking for a second chance. I just blocked her. My sale called me, apparently Jane hasn't told her what happened, just that we're fighting. I guess it's good my FIL is not alive to see Jane's behavior, she was the youngest and his favorite. MIL has senile dementia. All this happened a week ago. Next week Jane is going to be served. TLDR, I caught my wife with our gym coach in our bed and I know when and how it started.